Ready? Shall we start? Can everybody hear me? This isn't my real microphone. Can you hear me on this one? Yep. Just doing a bit of cable management. So I'm going to hand this microphone to the gentleman on my right. And he's to look after it and be fair and make sure everybody gets a chance to speak. You don't have of to course say I will. Oh, Oliver. Um, this afternoon we're going to be talking about um, the direct-to-garment market and the possibilities for people not doing it at the moment, coming into digital for the first time perhaps and looking at it as a, an option, a value-added option to what they're doing already or a changeover from screen printing. And my nice panel today is, it's a bit one-sided, I think you might say. It's slightly biased towards Cornet Digital. And on my right, I, I have... I don't understand what you mean. Oh, well. Um, Oliver Ludka, who's um, marketing... Now, I've got to get it right. Marketing manager, Amir. And next to him, we have a Cornet customer, Jan Liesk from... I've forgotten the name. Style 3 or Style Dry, I think it is in Germany. is German, isn't it? And then the odd man out at the end is the lovely Neil, whose surname I can't pronounce, Green Houge, from Epson, Epson Europe. So I have um, written some questions out. We may well drift off the agenda because that's the way these things go. Um, and there's a very obvious question to start with, and I've got to decide who I'm going to ask this to first. I'm going to ask Neil, I think. Who can benefit from direct-to-garment printing? Um, one of the main benefits of direct-to-garment, um, as we are with our machines, is the personalization. Um, T-shirt, generally, T-shirt printing has always been done by screen printing, but we are now moving away um, from the big high-end mass production to personalization. With the, um, for example, the computer game market where you have your, your team, you want to be in a certain team and, and things like that. It's the quick turnaround of t-shirts. Um, but not only t-shirts, I mean our, our printers, uh, both Cornet and the Epson printer, could, uh, are done not just for the t-shirt, you can adapt it to do bags and other. So it's a, it's a huge market. T-shirt market has always been huge and it's not actually declining. We haven't got to that question yet, that's cheating. Um, Oliver, what's your thought on this? Let's have Oliver next and then we'll ask you as the customer. Okay, maybe we do um, a little Q&A with the audience if that's okay. So yes, is, is there anybody out. in the audience who is actually printing and selling shirts today? Is anybody in that business? No? <laughs> okay. Why um, not? <laughs> a blank shirt. Um, what does it cost to purchase? And um, I do not know your business model from heart. Uh, you, pay me, you may be a little bit more on the ethical side or high quality side, but um, it's possible to buy a blank shirt for, let's say, around about two euro that will give you a pretty good quality already. Um, on top of that, as an additional cost, you have like uh, one or two euros in ink. And then, of course, you need to pay and uh, lease your machine. If you do it right and the size of the machine fits your business model, you will be at around 50 cents, let's say, per shirt. And you have more or less another euro, let's say, in additional operating cost for your operator, electricity, dryer, I don't know what. So let's say you have production cost of five, six euros for a shirt. And now you can sell it in a couple of different ways. Um, if, for example, you resell to other digital printers because you are like an outsourcing resource for them, you will be able to charge like uh, eight or nine bucks. However, if you have your own healthy end user business and you manage to come up with creative designs, with cool ideas that enable you to sell a shirt for 20, 30 bucks, um, then of course you will have way more fun. Um, so I would say um, garment printing is for anybody who um, has the creativity and the vision um, to put this into a working business model. So let's ask Jan as a a practical user of director garment printing you know what are your thoughts of what these two guys say is that correct and how has it benefited you 
Yes, it is. Uh, well, me working for a parallel company who is into direct-to-garment printing, I think we benefited quite a lot uh, from DTG printing because we, we could have never uh, entered this market with, with just uh, plain, plain screen printing because uh, the, the investment costs are way too high for a small company to start printing T-shirts or just uh, offering a wide variety of designs or offering customizations to customers. That would not be possible. So what other business were you doing before? Um, we are a, well, we started as a fashion retailer on, on, on solely eBay and Amazon. And uh, as of today, we are the, the largest t-shirt vendor on eBay Germany and Amazon Germany. And we're, we're just using DTG printing. So calling it, calling it machines to keep our inventory costs and inventory as, as low as possible. All of our designs and all of our orders are printed on demand. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we get the, the order in and as soon as the payment is confirmed, we can take a blank t-shirt off the shelf, put it in the printer, and a couple of minutes later, it's ready to ship for just a couple of bucks all around the world. And this is purely from Amazon and eBay? This is wow. purely from Amazon and eBay. How many, how many shirts do you, do you sell a month, for example, on that um, model? At the moment, we are producing about 500 orders per day. Good so 10,000 t-shirts a month. I didn't know and we, this. <laughs> we, we are at the upper end of the yeah. price range. Yeah. There's a lot of um, pr uh, price competition, of course, on, on online markets like Amazon and eBay. But um, we, we benefit quite a lot of the, uh, from the high quality printing DTG offers in comparison to other techniques like sublimation or t-shirt transfers. Do you get a lot of repeat orders, do you know? Or a lot of what? A repeat. Do you get one customer buying? Yes. And then they come back for more? They usually buy one t-shirt, the one, so the design they like. And um, so we, we are printing single, single orders. And you couldn't do that if you were a screen printer, could you? Well, no. we couldn't, we couldn't uh, offer such a wide variety of designs as we do. We offer a lot of designs, we, a lot of, we offer a lot of shirt variations, colors, sizes, and if you have to pre-produce that, that's, oh, it's not, uh, you cannot afford that as a small company. So, I mean, the simple model is you're stocking a basic range of blank garments. and We just have to it. keep a, a small amount of blank t-shirts in stock and can print thousands and hundreds of designs yeah. on that. Wow, I'm impressed. I mean, we, we are not even um, producing prototypes. We are, we are just laying out our designs. We are um, putting, in, uh, putting, putting it online, and the first T-shirt uh, sold is our prototype. So <laughs> we are, we are fine-tuning our files uh, for the first uh, customer who bought that shirt. And um, we're even Photoshopping our, our product images placing the designs on mock-ups, so there's no prep work, no prep investment you have to do for that. It's amazing. So it kind of leads me on to the next question. I mean, from Jan's point of view, there was a, a logical, easy transition, but how would a screen printer, how do you convince a screen printer to go direct to garment? Let's start with Oliver. Okay, but I mean, um, Jan uh, had, uh, had a number of valid points already. So um, first of all, it's all, it's all about um, what, what we used to call the digital economics, right? Um, you do away with uh, setup cost, plate cost, uh, all that sorts of stuff. Um, it's very obvious if you are in screen printing, um, printing really small batches, printing um, an individual shirt with an individual design uh, is almost not not feasible just in terms of cost. Um, then the image quality, um, talking about um, photographic designs, I mean, I know a couple of really good screen printers that get a very high quality out of the system, but um, with direct to garment, it's a little bit easier. And as Jan described so nicely, um, he can even Photoshop, fine tune, um, work in the files. I think uh, in terms of quality optimization, um, it produces um, way more options for you uh, in order to really deliver what the customer wants. So in short, it's way more flexible, um, cost efficient, and uh, sparks your creativity a little bit more. 
The only downside, I mean, let's, uh, let's be honest, uh, there is a break-even level involved, of course. Um, direct to garment uh, Inc. is a good value in my eyes, but of course, for a number of screen printers, it will not look cheap. So if you try to print like 500 copies of the same design, that's not something that you would do in DTG. Uh, let's, let's be clear about that. But um, again, you need to have the right business model. You need to be flexible a little bit. If you just try to move your analog business model, your screen printing business model, to digital DTG, um, that's, that's probably not going to work. So you can be very successful, but it requires a change in your thinking and your business model. What do you feel, Neil, on this, on this one? I think um, if you look at screen printers, um, most of the ones that go digital, it's not a replacement for their screen printing. It's, it's an addition to their business. Um, where they get the um, mass production shirts of, of a one image, the 1,000, uh, 2,000 t-shirts, that stays a screen printing. When they need something, a lower run, a personalization job, that actually that's where the digital comes into its own. Someone that wants a, a quicker turnaround of 50 t-shirts, all with a slightly different design or, or, or a name on the t-shirt. So that's, they use it to complement their a actual screen printing and add it as another feature rather than take it away from going all to digital. So it's just a complementation of it. Yeah, and have you got anything? This isn't really quite your area, is it? But have you got any comment you want to make? You'd probably rather screen printers didn't come into your market. <laughs> all I have to say is that I think you have to take a lot of more into account than just the pure costs of screen printing versus TTG. Of course, di direct to government printing has a lot of limitations a lot of uh, like special inks, the, the special feel of, of screen printed t-shirts, you cannot compare that to, to any sort of DDG prints. So it's, it, it, all, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve and what your ultimate goal for that is, what your customer wants and what you can uh, try to deliver. I think that's a good point. One of the, I was talking to a t-shirt printer actually in Turkey um, at a previous event and I was saying, why haven't you gone digital and he said it, it, the model was wrong for a start but one of the big problems and this isn't on my list of questions was he was worried about dust and dirt and one of the problems with running any kind of digital printing equipment is you've got to look after it a bit more carefully than a, a just a screen printing carousel would you agree with that Oliver do you think there's a So first of all, I'm um, talking about um, the limitations of uh, DTG, as Jan said. Of course, I'm not going to, um, to challenge that, but you will see some companies in the DTG market that um, offer you a, um, let's say, bridge technology between screen print and digital. At Cornet, it's called the paradigm, and that's the combination of the best of the two worlds. So um, you will still be able to use your effects from the screen printing, like metallic, flock, foam, I don't know why, and then you um, add the uh, digital portion of the image, so that's feasible. Um, direct to garment printing equipment, at least when you're talking uh, about an industrial level, of course is not intended to be used in uh, lab conditions, let's say. Yeah. Those are robust engines, um, however, you need to be a little bit diligent about doing your daily maintenance, daily care, there's a few things that you need to do and um, also the temperature and the um, humidity need to be within a certain range uh, in order to, to make your uh, printing process uh, reliable. But um, I mean, we make machines for textile productions and uh, I would be shocked if they couldn't handle a little uh, lint little ball or I don't know what. <laughs> what about you, Neil? Do you think that, do you ever get that as an argument? Well, the um, I, think, I think a lot of it is um, education of the screen printers. Uh, Primarily, a screen printing environment is a dirty environment. Um, but as, as you get into to explain the benefits of, and what they're getting, um, they need to close off a room and all that. And, and as Oliver said, it's not um, huge, huge as in it needs to be clean, but it, it doesn't need to be. These, these machines are robust enough that it doesn't really need to be a, a constant temperature or really completely dirt free but um, it needs to, it needs to it, it does have like to be at a level where most most printers most most people that do other printing are aware of this um, it's just a bit of education for the um, screen printers to understand it's common sense really yeah. isn't it 
if you look after something, it'll look after you. Okay, the, the next question I've got is, you know, obviously we're talking garment here. How can the digital... I'm just going to move my chair forward a bit. I can't see you anymore because Oliver's leaning forward. <laughs> How can the, you know, the, the digital, the director to garment sector is now... We know what T-shirts are. We know how they're produced. We know the advantages of doing it digitally over screen printing. Where can that market go next? How can it change? Can it evolve anymore? You can start, Neil, if you um, like. Going forward, uh, at the moment, um, some of the advantages of screen printing are the way it can do um, the formulation of ink, like metallics and, and, and embossed T-shirts and things like that. Um, at the moment, uh, a digital is usually CMYK and white printing. Um, but going forward, I, I see with the, the development of ink and the development of DTG, we can actually do, rather than just a plain printed T-shirt, look at doing different things on the T-shirt, which it, it will only... It, at the, at screen printing is at a level, is, that's what it is. It's not going to change. Yeah. It's gonna, it, it'll, it'll, it'll diminish, probably, um, whereas digital printing can only evolve. But a lot of that's to do with the design, isn't it? Um, being adventurous, as Jan was saying earlier, you know, you can take a design and you can use one like a prototype, and if it sells well, then you can just keep selling that that yeah. design. I mean, the design parameters are much better now, aren't and, they? And, and, it's, and it's just the quickness of the design. For example, Jan suggested doing, you, you might do a colour, and it's just a slight colour change that actually gives you what primarily is the same image, but a completely different yeah. T-shirt just by being different colours. Yeah. And that, that, that's the things where digital is good at. It's just quickly changing things. I mean, Jan, what's your thought on this? You know, where, where can you go next to grow your business and be more I think the printer manufacturers know best where to go, but I think... But you're a customer, so they're going to do what you if, tell them, if you, you If hope. you look uh, around the trade fair show, it's, uh, my, I've seen machines doing like uh, 300 T-shirts or garments per hour. So the only limitation to that process is the human operating that machine. I mean, we, we will not uh, see uh, DTG machines operating 600 shirts per hour. That's not possible. But um, when you, can, you can have machines with hexa colors, so the, the color garments are, are opening, which is always a good thing to have better color accuracy. Um, for example, printing, printing karma, uh, colors like yellow, uh, bright yellows, which is always a problem. Mm -hmm. or Printing special special inks like metallic tones, and that would be nice to have, but it's always a cost factor. So, do you think that you'll grow by increasing volume, or do you think you'll grow by becoming more diverse in in the designs you're doing and the styles you're doing? Well, that's these or are both. just basically these are my tools I have to work yeah, with, yeah. and uh, we are we are working with content machines uh, every day, but. Um, like I said, um, just um, improving the printing operation in general with better print quality, better print accuracy, that is, I think, a very nice way to go. Yeah. Oliver, what do you think on this one? So um, the cool thing about the uh, garment market is that you have 7 billion potential customers with an increasing tendency. Um, so I don't think that the market uh, overall is going to shrink. Um, it's really up to the individual um, service provider, and uh, Jan is giving a number of very good examples to that, to find the niche, to find the next great design, um, to really uh, charge customers a little bit more, and um, to, to, to sell a little bit more uh, quantities. It's, um, it's all up to yourself, and it's all up uh, to, your, to your own creativity. You, you see sometimes those cool shirts, those applications that you absolutely want to have, um, could be things like uh, ladies like with the uh, glittering uh, payettes and uh, other reflective elements and I don't know what, just nice pieces, colorful pieces. Also there are cool designs that you can do for, I don't know, the disco or music scenes. Uh, I've seen an, an example of, uh, let's say, a, a set of headphones printed on a shirt the spiraling cable uh, going down the shirt uh, until the edge. It looks from the, from the distance like you're wearing a headphone. Those things are selling like, like crazy. It's just cool design. So it's about the innovation. 
and the creativity, and if we can support it, Jan mentioned the uh, six color machines um, with the technology, of course, then that's a perfect match. But it's kind of the whole thing is, the, the design is crucial, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and if you've got a boring design, you have a boring t-shirt, and I've seen plenty of those. However, we should not we should not uh, do away with with the simpler kinds of jobs, right? There is a huge market and a demand for just putting a simple company logo on a shirt, uh, doing a very simple illustration, monochromatic shirts. Uh, of course, there's quite a demand for that, so I don't want to downplay. No, but that they're, they're not really the high margin products. You, you can't charge a lot of money no. for that. That's that's a fact. No. Okay. Um, when I was in Australia last year, they they were worried that the market for t-shirts was on a decline and I said I hadn't seen that anywhere else in the world have you do you think that's likely to happen and I'm surprised with Australia because I thought that was the t-shirt nation but they really you know they were convinced it was on the way out I, I think the US would probably argue that they yeah. are the t-shirt nation um, if we take the US market that is spiraling out of control everything is a t-shirt out there if we take more of where we work, the European market, um, I wouldn't say there'd be a decline. Um, actually, with the, the, what we can now do with um, digital printing and the fact that people can do their own designs, um, get um, uh, completely different designs, and, and also we, we can do uh, making T-shirts very individual, very quickly. So actually, the market, um, which will only increase because of the extra things that once digital gets better and better and the different things it, it, it goes into, I think actually the market will get bigger. Have you got any forecasts? Have you actually done any forecasts on market size? Um, only, on, only on complete fabrics, but, uh, um, which is up to 2.8 billion yeah. something in 2018, um, which encompasses T-shirt printing, but that's. Fabric but I printing. think it's you know I think garment printing now it's important enough. It needs to be separated out from the rest of fabric when you're yeah. trying to quantify which, which numbers. Which actually proves a point that yeah. it is increasing it's growing, yeah. because the fact it's it's becoming um, rather than being grouped as in we got here fabric, it's actually DTG T-shirt yeah. printing is actually becoming an, an element in its own right. Yeah, and what do you think? Well, is the market going to fade? No. I'm but kind of afraid. Um, I think pop culture really defines what we are wearing today. And, uh, and the t-shirt culture came, came up after World War II. And we are now stuck with this for, for 60 years now. And um, I, I, don't, I don't expect that to, uh, expect that to suddenly change. But um, well, we are, we are situated uh, in, uh, in, in Dreieich here in Germany which is one of the largest um, um, wholesale centers for no-name fashion. And what I can see there every day is that the fashion market in general is kind of saturated. But if you have a look at, at German shopping malls, for example, large brand names like, like H&M or Zara are expanding and shifting their, their, their business to, to other markets as well, like home decoration. So it's just, I think the markets are just widening up and broadening. Thank you, Oliver. That can be a very short answer because even if the t-shirt market overall is fading, uh, the digital penetration rate within that t-shirt market is going so fast that it's going to overcompensate the shrinking effect. Yeah. So um, allow me a selfish statement that DTG always puts you in the, in yeah. the right place. Yes, because direct-to-garment isn't just T-shirts, is it? We just think of T-shirts. I mean, what else do you sell machines for printing? What, what other garments are popular? Um, particularly in the southern European markets like uh, Portugal, um, customers tend to buy larger machines like uh, avalanches that print on cut pieces up to um, 60 by 90 centimeters. And then that cut piece is turned into the top let's say, of a, or, or into the front of a very nice shirt. Uh, that's the kind of, uh, of, of Givenchy uh, kind of shirts that you can sell for even higher prices. So printing on cut pieces is a very interesting market um, generally. And that's an important um, claim I need to make because direct-to-garment, of course, does not mean t-shirt shed. Mm. Um, you can print on hoodies, fleeces, trousers, 
scarves, even um, ribbons like that. Um, I've seen I've seen people printing on umbrellas, um, hats, of course, uh, baseball caps. Um, everything is possible. It might just require you a little bit of individual engineering or project work on the uh, on the pallet or on the printing table that can hold these things. But um, essentially, you can print on a multi uh, on, a, on a on a multiple variety. Of, um, of fibers and, uh, and fabrics. So uh, essentially, there is no limitation um, in, the, in the printing process itself. Yeah, Neil, what, what are your thoughts on? Uh, actually, one of the machines that uh, we sold isn't used for any T-shirts. It's primarily used for bags, cotton bags. Um, it's a huge business for them. They um, looked at it, and we was, we was promoting it as our T-shirt printer. And they said, oh, can we print on this? They, they had a cotton bag. It's cotton, like a T-shirt. So that's where their big market. As Oliver, Oliver said, it's um, hoodies is huge. Um, that is uh, another, uh, as well as T-shirt market going up. Things like hoodies and that have become more, more available with printing on them. Yeah, and are you, getting, are you just doing T-shirts, or are you going to do other kinds of garments? Only doing T-shirts. We are only doing as um, a minor number of, of, of colors and sizes. We're just widening our, our range of, of designs. So you don't plan to start no. doing hoodies or? Our customers are just interested in the designs, yeah. not the uh, the garment in general. But but I can but I think um, the, the manufacturers are just uh, adapting to to the uh, changing market needs. So, uh, on, I mean, with the business model you have, obviously you've got the product there with the choice of design that you want. You don't actually have a way that you can gauge what people might want because it's not on your site, or do you have a suggestion page somewhere where people can well, say, you know, we'd be quite interested in, I don't know, a hoodie as an example, or a pair of trousers? No, no, we're just having T-shirts yeah. and well, we we are got pre pre um, pre designed layouts or designs, yeah. which are, which the customer only can can um, buy at our shop, and um, we we certainly adapt to the customer needs in terms of what they are searching for. We are designing our products to special search terms yeah. you may find online, or we we know what's what's really selling well. With our customers. But do you keep an eye on what other what your competition is doing so that if they suddenly take on a product that you think perhaps we should look at that? Of or course, are you confident? There, there are a lot of companies doing yeah. that. I mean, I, uh, last as of last week, I visited a Spreadshirt, which is also situated here in Germany, and they're doing a couple of dozen different T-shirts, a couple of dozen different hoodies, and you can select whatever type you want. If you're more into the Ecotex or a cheaper, a cheaper one, it's up to you. But uh, in the end, they they really got um, they got they have um, some some huge problems adapting their printing processes to these different products because uh, all of the different products uh, contain different different uh, different garment textile components, which of course can can have a much or a large impact on the printing process. How important is the fabric of the T-shirt to you? I mean, do you sell is it 100% cotton or polycotton mixes, or what are your T-shirts mainly? Well, our T-shirts are 100% cotton, which works best with, with the cornet, I don't know, yeah. Yeah. corner printers certainly, and uh, other DTG printers uh, as well. I mean, we, we had an Epson printer before that, and it also worked with 100% cotton best. Thank you. It's interesting. I... I mean, the next question I've got, we've actually covered really, which was the unit cost, comparing the unit cost if you're a screen printer to a digital printer. But we, we, we've kind of talked about that. Is there anything else you would like to put into the mix? Um, one of the biggest problems with, obviously, it is, it is cost, is, is doing a, um, as you can say, if you do a prototype T-shirt, doing just a one t-shirt for a customer to say, I've got this design, not sure how it'll look. You can, you can obviously see it on screen 
and things like that, but actually to see the final printed T-shirt. To actually do that as part of screen printing, you need to make up the screens, which are about 50 euros each, just to make up a screen. It doesn't become viable um, doing screen printing if you're only going to do 10, 20 T-shirts. Yeah. Um, so that, and, and also, doing one T-shirt as a prototype, you then have the ability to, to change a color, just change a design very quickly before you go into that mass production run. So that's where the screen printer um, that has a huge run, for example, might use DTG as a, as a prototype machine, just to do that one, just to see what it looks like on one T-shirt and say, actually, that's not what we wanted, but at least I haven't wasted making up screens and then going into a huge run um, before I've noticed what I actually wanted to change. Well, this is one thing that um, the, the fashion houses are doing now, aren't they? I know Zara is well known for doing a test run on digital before committing it to analog, and it's the same principle. Uh, you can actually try out a test market if you're wanting to sell a particular design or style and not commit yourself if it's just not going to sell. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking at um, when you do it DTG, um, most companies, if they're going to a screen printer, they're going to get your order. The the amount of um, cost of a T-shirt, two euros, the euro for ink and, and and things like that. That's that's nothing. They write that off. They could do ten. They, you could they could especially for fashion houses. They they could they you could actually do ten T-shirts, post them to each each region, so they've all got one, they can all compare, see what they want to change before you could commit yourself. And really, the printer, it hasn't cost them anything um, to do that when they know they're going to get a big order out the back of it. Mm. Oliver, what have you got to add on that? Um, just two things. Uh, when you do your calculation in the first place about uh, your investment, uh, make sure that you really include all the items that you need. Um, include the dryer if you go for a vendor that requires uh, external pretreatment. Include that pretreatment equipment, um, hot presses, I don't know, any other stuff that you might require. That's one thing. And the second thing is um, particularly in inkjet direct to garment, the, the ink consumption will be a major um, factor in your cost calculation. And it really depends on the way you are using the printer. It's like any inkjet printing system in the world, if you let it sit switched on all day and you print one shirt every hour, you're not going to be happy because it will sit idle and spend the ink on purging and wiping and cleaning. You would be way happier if you start up the machine once a day, print the 50 shirts in a row and then switch it off again. So the way you maintain your machine, the way you clean your machine, the way you plan your production cycles, uh, will clearly have an uh, influence on your on your unit cost. Do you think machines? Are, I mean, they're going to continue developing. Jan, do you have everything you want in your direct to garment machine, or are there aspects that you would like to see changed or improved or just made different? Well, I can only speak for for Conit and. Yeah. Um, what I've seen over the past two years when, when we got our first uh, printer is that um, the, there, there are like a thousand different things you don't think of when you set up your DTG business. I mean, we had a lot of printing issues because of the temperature in our shop, because of the humidity in our shop, because of the, the, the dustiness of our shop. You have to take really care of the environmental conditions for the DTG printing process, which you do not have to in, in that large extent for, for screen printing, of course. But um, as, um, as I said before, you do really have to take care before that, before you move into a special warehouse, yeah. before you set up your printing process, there's a lot of uh, things you have to think of. Which I think is, is fair enough. I mean, how do you see Neil, the de development of machines in the future, well, how, what's going to change or are we there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I think, I think um, for the short term future, five years or whatever, I think we're, th we're, we're there as in at a level um, with 
the, the print quality, speeds. We, we'll obviously always look to, to make things faster, make, make things more user friendly, make things easier. Um, but I think the next on, on uh, thing will be um, possibly inks, changing of the inks using different colors, spot colors, and, and, and possibly things like that. Um, so there will be development, but I think in the short term, it will be just uh, from a manufacturer's point of view, small incrementations. From a, a user's point of view, they might be quite big, but from our point of view, I don't really see a major overhaul of um, DTG printing. Yeah, so it's more like refinements rather it, it than It will be more like change. refinements, unless my Cornic colleague tells me he's... I don't know, we'll find out. Let's <laughs> ask him. Oliver, tell me all your secrets. So first of all, I wanted to stress that the uh, technology has, uh, has come of age. Um, yeah. Cornet has been in that business since more than 10 years. And of course, in the beginning, um, there was no whiting at all. And then we started with the whiting, and it was a little bit gray. And uh, we, we lived, we learned. And uh, now, a few years later, it's a really robust, working, reliable printing process. Um, when you look at the samples, when you look at the results, they are really convincing and I'm happy to say that for the most people the machines work really, really well. Of course, there's always a thing, few things that you can improve uh, in terms of uh, printer technology. So as we said, uh, not every end user of a shirt is happy with, let's say, the feel or the layer of ink or the tackiness. So there's always something that you can do or improve about the ink, let's say, at a detail level. So that's one thing. Um, then the workflow. I think that's a um, underestimated element. So workflow in the sense of uh, getting jobs on the system easily, accepting customer orders easily. Um, also, uh, the whole area of RIP technology, color management, even if you have powerful printers like, a, like an Avalanche Hexa, which can cover a large color gamut, I must admit that we don't make it easy right now to achieve certain uh, spot colors. So there is a noticeable difference between RIP technology in, let's say, large format printing and direct to garment printing. So there's still a few things that we can do. And talking specifically about the Cornet Breeze, I still want a hook where operators can hang the frame that they use to fix the shirt on the printing pallet. I've been requesting that from product marketing for more than a year and it never arrived. It's just a simple look. I don't know why we don't get that. Well, very technical. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask these three gentlemen? No? Yes. Now, if I bring you this microphone, then I'll come running back again. I'll probably fall off the step. Um, do you see a market for um, um, fashion-like discharge applications for T-shirts and, and, uh, and other garments on DTG, if it would be possible. Who would you like to ask? Not the Cornet guy, why not? <laughs> Neil, this one's for you. No. Um. <laughs> At the moment, no, I can't. I, I can't see us that uh, developing. As Olivia said, we are at level with garment printing um, that's evolved over. As Epson, we're actually quite new to the area, um, but the actual change that you're talking about is very unlikely in the, in, I say, foreseeable future. Um, but at the moment, no. I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk, to Oliver. Do don't. Yeah, Jan, is it something that interests you? I'm certainly interested, and uh, discharge printing is nothing new to the to the to the industry. I mean, you you can you can um, screen printing always said discharge discharge printing for for decades now, and um, I think Conidacy is the first company which uh, brought that to digital garment printing or to, to, to uh, digital printing in general. But um, it all depends on the process, how easy you can set up the discharge uh, printing business, how easy you can integrate that in your, in your other workflow. Um, I mean, discharge, dig discharge inks are very, I think, hazardous to, 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 to handle with. So I think you need a lot of um, 
a lot of work to be done to be able to integrate that. And of course, it's, it's very hard to sell the advantage of discharge prints or discharge inks to the customer. Just, just dyeing out a substrate from your, from your garment or cotton or whatever. I mean, you, you, can, hand, you can have a similar, a similar result with, with just plain printing. So you need a customer who can, who can benefit from a discharge print. And uh, at the moment, we don't have that. Who would benefit? Because really, the customer doesn't care how his garment is printed as long as it's what he asks for, what he wants. Um, discharge printing, I'm not sure if it even makes sense to everybody here in the audience. So um, it means that on a dark shirt where you usually apply a fat layer of white ink in order to make the colors more pop out, discharge means that you discharge the, the, the colorant that's in the fabric already. So the, it's a special discharging fluid. You print it in the shape of the area that you want to print later on and it reveals like the natural color um, of the cotton and then you print uh, the CMYK ink on that. So the hand feels way better, it feels way more natural and actually I like to wear shirts that have been produced that way. So um, I do care, having a thin layer of ink is, uh, is really important for me and I think for um, fashion applications there's a lot of people that would prefer a discharge shirt even if they are not aware of the fact that it is a discharge, discharge printed shirt. I think that answers the question quite well. Very good, Oliver. Is, uh, doesn't anybody want to ask anything? No, look at them. Well, these guys will be here for another few minutes, so if you want to come and ask your secret questions, please do. And um, thank you very much for, for coming along. Um, I hope you found it interesting, and I'd like to thank my three, my three men on the stage here. That's Neil, Jan, and Oliver. Thank you very much.